Hey guys and welcome back to another Mansion 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create a door and create a peephole in that door as well. So I think peephole is the correct word, it's kind of like you know in, mainly in hotel rooms you have this kind of glass look through on the door, we're going to be creating that today where we can look through that. So you see this is technically the inside of the room so we can look out, so if I press E we're going to be able to open and close the door, but if I press H instead we're going to look through the glass instead so we can look outside of the door like so. If I press H, we're then going to go back out like so. And if on the other side of the door, we press H, we're not going to be able to look through as these are typically just one way pieces of glass, so we can only look through on the right direction like so. So like I say, this is what we're going to be making today. And what I'm going to be using is this door static mesh I've got of CG Trader, which is this one here. So I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. However, you can see the materials didn't work too well and I didn't spend too much time trying to fix it all. And I have modified this slightly, so I've joined them all together. I've actually created a hole in the door here because in the actual one there wasn't a hole for some reason, it was just a glass. And I've also moved it to be in the correct positioning as well, so the corner is on the edge here. Which you're going to want to do as well if you use that, however you can of course use any model you like. I just wanted one with a glass peephole here like so. But without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create our door blueprint. So you may already have this set up and you may already be able to open and close the door and if you do you can skip ahead in the video and I will have timestamps kind of in the bottom so the chapters I believe they're called so you can skip ahead to the part of the video you want. But if you want to watch the whole thing we're going to create the door now. So we can right click, go to blueprint class and get an actor and I'm just going to name this one peephole door BP. You can name it whatever you like and then open that straight away like so. In here we're going to add a component and we're going to add a static mesh like so, static mesh here, and I'm going to name this one door, setting this to be our door static mesh we have, which I believe I named mine new door SM there, like so, and also this is quite big, so I'm going to scale it down to about 0.5. Again, use whatever you like. What I'm also going to do is deselect that, and then I'm going to add a box collision. I'm going to name this one door box, like so, and this means that when we're in this box collision, we can open and close the door. So I'm going to scale that up to be the size that I want it to be. And again, if we're inside of this, we can open and close the door. When we're not inside of it, we can't. So keep that in mind when scaling this up, so you only get it to the size you want. And I think that's going to be good for me. Once we've done that, we want to add another box collision, naming this one inside box. And this is how we're going to determine which side of the door is inside the room or not. And then so we know which side of the door the player has to be on to use the camera. So I'm going to say this side of the door is the inside, so I'm going to put it here and basically just scale it up to be the same size as this box, but only for this half. So it's going to be this half of the size. So I think that width will be good, maybe move over to there and then scale it up like so. And it's quite easy to wrap your head around, all we're doing is simply just making it so this box collision tells the code that we can open and close the door and this box collision tells the code that we can or can't use the camera. Talking of camera. What we're going to do is now add that. So we deselect this again, add a component, and we're going to add a camera like so. And I want to actually make sure that it is facing this direction by default, so it's facing 0, 0, 0. That isn't necessary, however, it does just make the maths a little bit easier later on. So we could just then use basic numbers instead of having to do something different. So what I'm going to do is now actually just change everything else to fit the rotation of the camera. So let's do that now. So let's do the door first. So we rotate the door like so and then I'll move the camera in a second and then let's move these box collisions as well. So select both of those, rotate them and then move them back into the correct positions like so. So you may want to add the camera in first, however obviously if you're following along with me you won't have done that, but this is what I've got and then I'll move this back into the correct position as well. So now what we've got is again the door, the box collisions and the camera. Now let's move the camera into position. So we can kind of eyeball it here to get it where we think it would go. And then what we can do is minimize this a little bit but so we can still see it and then actually drag the door into the level. And in the bottom right, you should see we have a preview of it there. So what I'm gonna do is move this into a better position and then reorder how my viewport looks. And if I just move this up like so. Move this up to here. Now you can see in the bottom right, we have what the camera sees. So we can see that this is going to be good. So actually that's perfect. So you can see here, that's where the peephole is. So I might just disable snapping, move it down ever so slightly, and then move it forwards again. 
So I think that's going to be good for me, like that. So the position for me is 10 on the X, 50 on the Y, and 50 on the Z. But again, customize it to get it working perfectly for you. We compile and save, and that's pretty much all we need to do in the viewport. So this is the basic part of the first door set up. So what we can do now is we can go over to the event graph and start creating some code. And I'm going to actually delete all of these three event nodes here. What we want to do first is right click on our door box collision, add event, add our component begin overlap, right click it again, add event, add our component end overlap. So this is going to determine when the player is in or out of the box. For other actor, we're going to cast to our character, which for me is the third person character, and that's just so that we know we want our character to be the one overlapping the box or not. Do that on the other actor for both of these events, like so. Then off the top cast here from begin overlap, we're going to right click as third person character, or just your character, and hit promote to variable, naming this one character reference or car ref there, like so, because we're going to need to access this later on to do specific stuff to the player. Then we can also come out of this and enable input, like so, and now the bottom cast we can disable the input. And this is because we want to be able to use the camera and our keyboard events on this door. So we want to enable and disable the input, but we only want to use it when we're close enough to the door. Target is going to be self, player controller is going to be get player controller for both of those. So we can just connect it into there for both of them like so. Then we're going to hold down G and left click to get a gate. Open is going to be enable input. Close is going to be disable input. And the enter is going to be our keyboard event for opening and closing the door or using the camera. So I'm going to create some action wrappings. So we're going to go to edit, project settings, and then go down to input. Let me delete them because I already have them. However, what we're going to do is add the action mapping here, naming this one interact or open door. And I'm going to set this to be the E key. You can set this to whatever you like, but I want the E key. Then we hit another plus action mapping. I'm going to name this one door peephole or use camera, anything like that. And I'm going to set this to be the H key. Again, set this to whatever you like, but E and H seem to be working well for me. And then I'm going to close that like so. Now in the event graph, if we right click, we can actually search for that. So if I search for interact, you can see that we have our action events interact here, and we have pressed, that's going to go into the enter of the gate like so. So now what's going to happen is when we press E, we're going to enter the gate only if it has been opened by us walking close enough to the box collision, and it closes when we walk away. So we can only come out of exit if we're in the box collision and we're pressing E. So that will work perfectly for us. One other thing we want to do is we want to hit the plus variable here, creating a Boolean value, and I'm going to name this one open door question mark or opening door or wants to open door or anything on those lines. Essentially it means that the player wants to open the door, not use the camera. So I'm going to set that to be true off of pressed, so tick it there, and then I'm going to set it to be false off of released. So we only want to open the door when we are pressing E. And again, that's still going to go into the enter of the gate like so. And then we'll come back to this later to do the camera. Out of exit of the gate, what we're going to do is hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting that in there, where the condition is going to be open door. So again, we're using this boolean here to see whether or not we want to open the door. If we do, so true, we're going to get a flip-flop, like so. A, we're going to add a timeline, like so. And I'm going to name this one door timeline. And this is going to be the animation for opening and closing the door. A will go in play, B will go in reverse. So A will open it, B will close it. Because the flip-flop just toggles between two values of A and B, in our case, open and close. So we can double click the timeline to open it up. I'm going to set the length to be one, because I want it to take one second. And then we're going to add a float track, naming this one door track. Then on this track, we can right click, add a key to curve float with a time of zero, value also of zero, so it's at the very start. And then we can right click, add another key, the time of 1 and a value also of 1, so it's now at the very end. You want to set the time to the length of your timeline, press these two buttons here, now we can see this is our basic timeline for going from point A to point B, i.e. close to open, and when it reverses it will go from open to close. We can compile and close that, and now you can see we have this door track here. Out of the door track we're going to get a lerp float, or just a normal lerp sorry, with that going into the alpha not the A. Because a lerp goes between values of A and B smoothly, and the alpha determines that, which we're using the track from the timeline for. Now to determine A and B, these are open and close values. So A is close, B is open. 
So what I'm going to do is go to the viewport and see what it is now. So at the moment, our close value is going to be minus 90 because we want to rotate it on the Z and only the Z. As you see, that will happen like so. So minus 90 is going to be good for me. So what we can do is go back to the event graph and set A to be minus 90. B, what I'm going to do is open it to where I want. So I want to open it to there, which is minus 190. Then close that again like so, setting this to now be minus 190 on B. So we'll go from A to B smoothly using this timeline. One thing I've also just noticed is what I'm going to do is actually also parent the camera to the door so that when the door opens, we can still look through the peephole working perfectly. Very simply, we can just drag and drop the camera onto the door. Now when we open the door, the camera will go with it, which works a lot better for us. Compile, go back to the event graph, and now we can actually open and close our door with one last step. We're going to drag and drop a reference to our door static mesh in here. And out of this, we're going to set relative location, not location, sorry, we're going to set relative rotation because we want to rotate the door, plugging that into the update of the timeline and the new rotation, we can right click split structure pin with the Z go into the return value there, X and Y leave a zero. Because again, we only want to rotate it on the Z. So what we've done now is we've set up a system in which we can open and close a door. So I'm going to select this hit C to comment it, naming this open and close door. Now if we hit play, what we can do is we can go up to it, hit E, and this is going to open the door, hit E again, it's going to close the door. And if we're not close enough, we hit E, nothing will happen. So that is how we open and close doors. And this works perfectly, and because we've done a timeline, we can get another one, and now, well, if I put it in the correct location, like so, this will also work. So the benefit of this over level sequences it's a level sequence can't be moved, it has to be in that specific location and only used once. But a timeline, you can do it anywhere, like so. But I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave it there for today's episode guys, because when I finish recording this and I've come to edit it, I realise it's actually quite long, so what I'm going to end up doing is just splitting it into two halves. So I'm going to upload the first episode today, second episode tomorrow, and so obviously today we've actually created the door itself, and tomorrow what we're going to do is we're going to actually create it so we can look through the spy hole, the peephole, the glass hole, whatever you want to call it. So we can actually look through that, use it, look around with it and get back out as well. So we're actually setting up that functionality. Today we obviously just did the door itself. So again, sorry that it's in two parts, but I did want to go in depth in this, explain it all so you know what you're doing. And obviously I don't want it to be too long because it came out to be about half an hour, which obviously we don't really want. But yeah, tomorrow will be part two where we're finishing this off. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.